Hello, welcome to podcast Kuliah Kelompok 10 with title of Postpartum Complications. My name is Aisha Hana with name B04198030 together with my two other friends, Tengku Aisha and Eng Omai will dig into this title. There are six, there are six subtopics that we will explain in this podcast. Those are Torsho Uteri, Retensho Secondine, Rupture uteri, atony uteri, prolapsus vagina, and lastly prolapsus uteri. Hello everyone, my name is Ang Yume, name B04198006. Before we get into postpartum diseases, we should first know what is the postpartum period. This period consists of the recovery period which is 80 to 85 days in cows where they recover from the nutrient and physical demands of calving and lactation. And stress is the period in which cows do not experience the stress cycle. During this period, the reproductive organs undergo involution to support another pregnancy. Hello listeners, my name is Tengku Aisha Arika, NIM B04198020. Some important that we as vet students should know regarding postpartum complications are that complications can cause reduced fertility, also reduced milk production, and also we should know this in order for us to prevent more cows being called because it especially affects the dairy economy. The first type of complication that may occur is the torso uteri. The definition of torsho uteri is actually a condition in which the uterus is rotated on the longitudinal axis, which causes the exit of the fetus is narrowed or even closed. Uterine torsion often occurs in dairy cows that is experiencing the first time to give birth and those cow that is kept permanently unstable. From the left top picture, we can compare the normal position of uterus and also the twisted uterus. The picture shows that the uterus is twisted to the left side. Next, we will move on to the factors that can cause uterine torsion to occur. So firstly, the factors which is cows making sudden movements such as standing or lying down. This situation might, may cause Torsho uteri because the uterus is hanging free. Next is the excessive active movement of fetuses, which can also cause torsho uteri to occur. Other than that is lack of allantoise fluids. And lastly, the factors that, that may cause torsho uteri to occur is the uterus muscle tone decreases, in which it is possible to occur due to the lack of exercise by the cattle or even the cattle in which cattle that is kept in uh, permanently unstable. Uterine torsion can be handled in several ways, which are the first one is repositional of fetus through vaginal, the second way is by C-section, and the third way, according to Purohit Ital in 2011, uterine torso can be treated by cow rolling using a board or the Schaffer's method. Referring to the picture on top right, the procedure to do Schaffer's method are below. The first one, ascertaining the side of torsion. Second, cow is casted carefully in lateral recumbency on the side of direction of torsion. Third, the front and hind legs are secured separately. The fourth, a plank of certain measurement is placed on the upper paralumbar fossa of cattle in an inclined manner with lower end on ground at the time of rolling. The fifth is one exit one assistant must stand on the lower end of the plank. Sixth, while the other assistant on the upper end of the plank. Seven, 
the cattle is rolled slowly in the same direction of torsion and the last one is vaginal examination is performed after each roll to access the degree of detorsion. And now we will moving on to the second complication which is retentio secundinarum. It is also known as retention of placenta or retention of fetal membranes. So what is the definition of retentio secundinarum? It is a condition in which retention of the fetal membrane or placenta that passes through the third stage of birth process. Retention occur more than 12 hours after fetal expulsion in which in the normal condition placenta is usually be expelled 3 to 8 hours after fetal expulsion. There are actually various factors that contribute to retention of placenta to occur, but the main two factors are weak uterine contraction and also lesion that occurs on the placenta. Other small factors that may contribute to the problem to this problem is infection, tween, premature, abortus, disturbance of hormonal balance, excessive stretching of myometrium, degeneration of myometrium which occurs due to bacterial toxin, genetics in which more common in Ashaya's breed, increased virulence of microorganism, deficiency of calcium, vitamin A and vitamin E. As for the treatment to this condition, according to many expertise, there is no best or no gold standard treatment for retention secondini. However, when this problem arises in farm, there are several ways to treat such as manual removal of the placenta that can be done to release cotyledin within 24 to 48 hours. In order to remove manually, the cattle must first be given with epidural anesthesia. However, this method is not suggested by the experts as the post effect of this treatment will cause reduction in fertility of the cattle. Another way is to give hormone. The hormones that can be given are firstly oxytocin in which it can be given after 12 hours of parturition and secondly hormone prostaglandin 2 alpha which can be given 1 or 12 hour after parturition and the last method is by uh, sorry <laughs> so when we compare all these methods of treatment the most preferred way by experts is to cut the placenta that is hanging from vulva and leave the rest to expel naturally. Thank you, Anna. So I will continue on other um, complications postpartum, which is rupture uteri. So the rupture uteri is basically a tear on the uterus, usually on the dorsal side of the uterus, uh, can be full or partial, and is usually due to trauma. Sometimes uh, during dystopia, the animal has difficulty to give birth. So veterinarians help uh, by uh, manually extracting the fetus. And maybe if there's death in the fetus, so fetotomy has been, has been done. So this might have caused a trauma to the uterus, thus tearing it. So the clinical signs can be seen as peritonitis and later can be septicemia. So in order to overcome rupture of the uterus, so is there's two methods. The first one is surgical repair where we, uh, where we do um, treatment on the tear uh, by laparotomy, or we can just use antibiotics and hormones. Okay, next on the list is atony uteri. 
or also known as uh, inertia of the uterus, where there's a failure to expel contents within the uterus due to no tone in the uterus. So the causes here can be divided into primary and secondary. Primary is due to maybe the cow itself having a lack of exercise, a heavy uterus due to having twins, um, a layer of fat due to obesity uh, and hormone imbalance. Secondary cause of atonia uteri can be due to infection, metritis or retentio secundi as Hannah has uh, presented. So the treatment for atonia uteri can be by using hormones um, as uh, specifically oxytocin or combination of oxytocin and estrogen. Thank you, Aisha. Now I'll be talking about prolapses. Cows can prolapse before or after calving. Once a cow has prolapsed, there is a high chance she'll repeat the situation next year. There are two types of prolapse, vaginal and uterine, and both require correctional therapy. The vaginal prolapse is more common and looks like a pink mass of tissue. The common cause of vaginal prolapse is the pressure and weight of a large uterus in late pregnancy. Some heavily pregnant cows will strain when passing manure while lying down or begin straining from the irritation of a mild prolapse. Vaginitis, estrus, breeding or the presence of the calf's head or feet within the pelvic canal can also cause the cow to strain until the vagina prolapses. Mild prolapses look like a bulge the size of an orange or grapefruit and will usually go back in when the cow gets up. But if she starts to prolapse each time she lies down or if she strains while lying there, the tissues may be forced out further to the point that they cannot go back in. Then she has a mass of vaginal tissue bulging up, becoming damaged, dirty and possibly infected. The vaginal wall is not a sterile environment, so infection is not the primary concern. Instead, once these tissues are turned inside out, the returning blood supply from the prolapse area becomes restricted, making the tissue swell. The longer it is left outside the cow's body, the more swelling occurs and the harder it becomes to replace. If the cow is near calving, the swelling may make the birth process difficult. If the, process, if the prolapse is large, like a volleyball, the urinary passage may also have pressure on it and the cow cannot urinate until the prolapse tissue is pushed back in. She may strain to urinate but unsuccessfully, aggravating the problem further. If not treated early, the vaginal tissue that is prolapsed and swollen may eventually become infected and make the cow seriously ill. If the tissue has been prolapsed for several hours, it should be cleaned off before being pushed back into the cow. Otherwise, the irritation from contamination will cause inflammation and infection. It is recommended that it is washed gently with warm water and a mild disinfectant before pushing it back in. If a prolapse has been out for several days before discovery, the tissue may be dry, damaged, and more difficult to push back in. Some cows prolapse every calving season during late pregnancy and continue to prolapse after the tissues are replaced. To correct this chronic problem, we strain the cow, clean the protruding ball of tissue, and push it back in. Then take several stitches across the vulva to hold it close and prevent future prolapses. The stitches should be anchored in the head skin at the sides of the vulva. The skin is thick and won't tear as easily as the skin of the vulva. It is also less sensitive and less painful for the cow. The cow is still able to urinate through the stitches, but the vulva cannot open enough for further prolapse. The stitches must be removed when she starts to cow or she will tear them out or have difficulty calving. When she goes into labour, the stitches can be cut and gently pulled off. Once she has calved, the pressure that caused the prolapse will no longer exist. Uterine prolapse is more fatal than vaginal prolapse and is considered a veterinary emergency. This is when a cow continues to push after the calf is born and she pushes her uterus completely out. The cow must be restrained and the vet call immediately as the trauma from the prolapse can lead to the cow bleeding to death. A difficult pull, a lack of calcium, magnesium or protein, or giving birth on the slope can predispose the cow to a uterine prolapse. The cow should be confined in a small area to keep her from moving too much and snapping the uterine artery, leading to hemorrhage and death. Those arteries are fragile so it's a real risk. Do not put the animal in a head gate because if she's standing but weak, you run the risk of her going down and choking. Prepare clean towels and a box of large heavy-duty garbage bags which acts like a washing machine. 
You envelop the uterus in the bag with the animal on the ground in a frog mid position and then wash the uterus with warm water and a mild disinfectant. The bag also protects the uterus from potential contaminants. If the animal is standing, a clean towel acts as a sling. A towel won't stretch as much from holding the weight as a garbage bag. Two people stand on each side of the cow to hold the uterus off the ground with the towel, while the vet works on cleaning the uterus and pushing it back in. It makes the process less tiring as it's really difficult to have to hold both the uterus and simultaneously push it back in. Some veterinarians will pour sugar over the uterus to keep the tissue supple and reduce swelling prior to trying to replace it. Sugar removes water from the tissues, making it easier to push the uterus back into the pelvic canal. Oxytocin should not be used as it will turn the uterus into a brick and you won't be able to replace it. You want the uterus to stay big, floppy and pliable so you can work with it. Begin replacing the uterus by kneading and pushing it with the palm of your hand, starting at the cervical end nearest to the wobble. Even if care, damage often occurs. Try not to use your fingertips as they can punch through the uterine wall, but sometimes it is unavoidable. Some caruncles are likely to come off in your hands as you are pushing. It can be really distressing, but don't panic. This is a tough situation even for seasoned practitioners. Once you've replaced the uterus, you need to make sure both horns are completely extended so a prolapse doesn't reoccur. Checking the uterine horns is relatively easy to do if you are tall and have long arms. If not, you can use a pop bottle or wine bottle as an arm extension. At this point, you can decide if you are going to leverage the uterus. Vets often have different opinions on whether to use a vulvar stitch. Oxytocin can then be administered at this point to get the uterus to calm down, which minimizes the chance of prolapse reoccurring. An antibiotics and an SAID is prescribed. Replacing the uterus into its proper position is more difficult than a vaginal prolapse. If a uterine prolapse is severe enough, the option of amputation is sometimes best. This option gives the cow time to raise her calf, but she would need to be called due to her lack of a reproductive tract. However, if you are able to replace the uterus and the cow survives in good condition, then you might reconsider culling the animal. Often, culling is recommended as it's hard to know how much scarring is present. If the animal is really valuable, putting her in an embryo transfer program is another option to consider. And that is all from me. Thank you very much.